Hello, hello, everyone. I am hip hop artist Frankie Bars, and I got the keys to DC statehood. And I wear this hat because I'm the host. And today, we're going to talk about the art of DC statehood. And you say, Frankie, what is DC statehood? Simply put, DC statehood is a movement where DC residents seek to have full voting representation. It is a movement where DC residents seek to have full democracy, where the mayor and the city council can have the final say on the laws being passed. So once our city becomes a state, we will be able to have voting representation on the house floor and we will be able to have the final say on the laws being passed. As it concerns a current update of this year, as of this year, DC has successfully gained over 203 co-sponsors for HR 51 with the DC Admissions Act. Now, we did say that this is the art of DC statehood. So we are going to share with you, as we do every episode, three people, influential people in Washington, DC on the art side, and share with you three influential people on the policy side and show you how art can be used to push the DC statehood movement, helping us gain equal rights, having the final say on the laws being passed. We want to push the fact that art can be used to inspire or continue to promote or broadcast the DC statehood movement. We can use media, we can use television, we can use music, we can use murals, we can use painting, we can use different forms of art to help paint the picture of the need in Washington, D.C. Gaining equal rights is every other 50 states. So the first artist that I'm going to let you hear from today is an R&B hip hop slash trap artist, I would say, named Whitney Sweetwine. Whitney Sweetwine. Now Whitney Sweetwine is from Southeast Washington, D.C. Now Southeast with an F and the F is for Frankie. And Whitney Sweetwine is going to perform for you live at Club Elevate on K Street at an artist showcase sponsored by WKYS 93.9. And she is going to give an awesome, vivacious, vibrant, turned up live performance for you at Club Elevate. And then we're going to elevate to a private event with Noah Wills. Now, Noah Wills is a young man who started a nonprofit organization called Students for DC Statehood. Students for DC Statehood. And within this nonprofit organization, uh, Students for DC Statehood, Noah Wills uses his nonprofit organization to help push the DC Statehood movement amongst and within college age students and beyond from DC and throughout the world across seas. So let's go ahead and connect with the amazing bumping sounds of Whitney Sweetwine and also hear from Noah Wills.
uh, politics is very influential, especially in this area growing up in D.C. Um, like you said, uh, Mary Old Bowser, she has 202 Creates, and it allows artists to have an avenue to be creative and to express themselves, and I think that's very important in this area, especially when we have so many artists, so many different people doing things, and not just music, but also art, uh, every, anything that you can pretty much think of. So when you... I guess mesh the two together, you have something really important, something really creative, you can only come up with something even bigger. So I do think that um, having, I guess, politicians that have like a really big platform, if they were to use music in this area, then it would be very influential, especially for the younger generation, because music is something that speaks to our souls and it affects everyone in this area. A recent graduate of American University has done extensive DC work, including recruiting other students and hosting DC statehood panels on campus while heading the chapter at AU. For his continued devotion to the cause, we are happy to honor him tonight. Uh, Noah, Noah, and, and Noah went to Scotland with Paul and I, and was Woo! just a great, great help. So it's a great honor, Noah, to have you here. Thank you. Thank you very much. For those of you who don't know, Students for DC Statehood is a nonprofit organization here in DC. Um, it educates and mobilizes students and young adults to advocate for equal voting rights and statehood for the people of the District of Columbia. Um, I just really want to thank Senator Paul Strauss, Senator Mike Brown, and Representative Franklin Garcia, because without you three, I probably would have never gotten involved in this movement in the first place. Um, and just really quick, I want to thank all of you for appreciating the student's voice in this movement, because one of two things is going to happen. Either gonna, we're going to inherit the problem, or we're going to inherit a state. And I really hope it's the latter. But we'll be ready either way. So thank you. Noah Wills, I'm the president of Students for DC Statehood. It's a nonprofit organization here in DC that educates and mobilizes students and young adults to advocate for equal voting rights and statehood for the people of the District of Columbia. Um, art is important in any political movement because we need a way to engage people who are either not aware of the situation or who just don't know about it. Um, so in regards to DC statehood, we need people who are uh, well versed in the arts and can, and can do uh, things, multimedia or anything that can get people involved around the country, around the world, so that not just the people here in DC uh, can know about the issue. So art is a very important way uh, for, for people who might otherwise not be involved to get involved and to spread the message around the country. Yeah, so you just got to hear from Whitney Sweetwine and got to experience a dynamic bumping performance from Whitney Sweetwine, as you also got to witness Noah Wills receive an award from the Shadow Delegation for his hard work on DC statehood through his nonprofit organization, Students for DC Statehood. Now, it's time to transition from statehood to another hood in Ward 5 of Brooklyn Manor, where you're going to hear from John Leo. Now, John Leo is a mural artist who is a very, very successful and prominent mural artist that creates and orchestrates and organizes different artists and curators to create murals and paint murals throughout the city that represent social equality. The mural that he painted in Brooklyn Manor off Rhode Island Avenue, Ward 5, Washington, D.C., reads, Stop the Gun Violence Together. So John Leo is going to explain to you how art and social needs or social issues can be combined and how art can be used, specifically murals, can be used to push social change. Then you're going to hear from Yvette Falta Heck. Yvette Falta Heck. She is a Latina woman who is a retired woman from the Marine Corps. And she was at the Latino American Museum ceremony where she received an award for her work fighting for our country in the Marine Corps. So let's go ahead and hear from John Leo and Yvette Falto Heck. Come on, turn your hate into poetry, pain into power, and I need some friends in your minutes into hours. I would walk away from the spotlight for the good life, for the good life. Uh, my name is John Leonardo, I'm an artist, and I helped paint and put this mural together that we did here at the community. Um, 
I live here in Washington, D.C., and I've been working with our friends over at Tom's to help curate and paint murals all over the United States and abroad. We're up to over 70 murals now that we've done. Um, you know, as artists, we can use our art to create conversation. And I think that, you know, in the way that we do it, we really want to drive action out of it and use it as a tool. And so when we've been putting up these murals and working with different communities and getting all these artists together to get that message out there through this different signs here, um, we want to raise awareness of the fact that 90% of Americans do want stronger, more universal background checks. And they are, they are giving, we're trying to give them a way to get out there and, and be heard uh, through this so that we can make changes. Thank you for your service, Colonel Linda Alto Head. Hi, I'm Yvette Falto Heck. I'm a retired Air Force Colonel. I was in the Air Force for 25 years. I work in the space program. And I'm humbled and honored that today I receive an award for the Latino community. And um, it's a great, great honor to be part of this community. And besides receiving an award, here this activity is trying to get some awareness about the need to have a Latino museum in the DC area. The Latinos, we have contributed to many, many things to the United States and making America a, a great, the great America that it is today. And having a, a Latino museum will be a wonderful thing just to show how we have contributed to make America much better, just like the African Americans, the Native Americans, and the rest of America. So I support having a Latino museum in the DC area, and I hope that our government supports our idea. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah, so you got to connect with mural artist John Leo, and you got to connect with retired Marine Corps veteran Yvette Falto Heck. Now it's time to take you to Southeast Washington, D.C., of MLK Avenue at a open mic called Speak Easy, where Minnesota Vaughn musician Minnesota Vaughn. Now Minnesota Vaughn is a guitarist. He's a musician that plays multiple instruments, multi-talented, and he expresses himself through vocals, singing. So he's going to give a vocal performance at We Act Radio. Now he gives a live vocal performance as he plays the guitar in the genre of blues. Then after we connect with Minnesota Vaughn, where he expresses or explains or shares his opinion on how we need social equality for street musicians, you're going to hear from Senator Paul Strauss. Now, in the political realm, they consider him the shadow senator. The only reason why they consider him the shadow senator is because we are not yet a state. That's another reason why we need to become a state, the 51st state. Once D.C. becomes a state, gaining full voting representation, Senator Strauss will be Senator Strauss as you take away the shadow from his name being an official senator. So we will have Senator Michael Brown, Representative Franklin Garcia, and Senator Paul Strauss, who's going to talk to you about how art and policy affect each other, where he also awarded me this nice award at a private event with the shadow delegation giving me this award for my hard work and using music and video to inspire social equality and full democracy for Washington DC being the 51st state expressing the art of DC statehood so let's go ahead and go to Southeast and hear from our guitarist and musician Minnesota Vaughn and Senator Paul Strauss. 
So guys, we're about to get some healing through some music. Please give it up and make some noise for Minnesota Vaughn. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. <laughs> policy is concerned like dealing with the police you know there's sometimes you know you, you come across police like metro police who who make you move if you're outside of the metro and then sometimes you come up across ones in this very same space space who don't on a different day so it's really about you know your crime let's get street performing man <laughs> it's street performing you know it's basically setting up at a metro station or setting up open air in the street in a high traffic area with a lot of people you know, pass and you know, law of averages dictates you're gonna get something out of it. I've never gone out and made absolute zero unless I stayed less than 30 minutes, you know. But busking is just, it's, it's, it's street performing, man. And, you know, it, 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 a lot of people make a living doing it. Not only in the DMV, but like in New York, you know, Chicago, those areas, you know, weather permitting. It's like six months a year, you can really go hard. But a lot of the bigger bands, they can do it, you know, pull it off, especially like during the hockey season, man. At the Verizon Center, it's a strong busking culture there. A lot of those guys are amplified. And I think that had a lot to do with actually what was going on in City Council this summer with regard to the proposition that was supposed to end the amplified music. Once again, it didn't happen. So I'm glad about that. All right, well, it's been 55 years since Hawaii became the last state to join the union. But fast forward to 2014, and representatives from Washington, D.C. are pushing for one more. Yesterday, a Senate panel considered adding a state called New Columbia, which we know as Washington, D.C. Of course, under the initiative, New Columbia would become the 51st state, while a separate federal district, including the White House, the Capitol, the Supreme Court, and the National Mall, would remain under the control of Congress. It was the first congressional hearing on D.C. statehood in 20 years. This time around, the chairman who led the committee, Senator Tom Carper, was a huge advocate for the initiative. Take a listen. We bear the full responsibilities of funding our federal government and dealing with the consequences of the laws that it enacts. They do not enjoy the benefits and protection of having voter representation, voting representation in our Congress. Currently, Washington, D.C. has over 630,000 residents. That's more than both the states of Wyoming and Vermont. However, those residents are heavily taxed, and they also have no vote, no representation in Congress. But while the campaign has seen a momentum of congressional support build in recent months, it's up against a lot of criticism. So is a 51st state in the cards for the U.S.? Joining me to discuss the latest efforts is the D.C. shadow senator who participated in this hearing yesterday, Paul Strauss. Always good to have you on. Okay, so... Thank you, Mayor. Good senator, to be here. Thank you. There are many people watching this program who, who of course, don't live in Washington, D.C., and just don't quite grasp the rationale for why D.C. should really be a separate state. Talk about what this campaign is really all about. Well, to those people that don't understand the status of the Capitol, the reality is most people do, don't understand why we don't have the rights and privileges that other Americans. Around the world, people can't comprehend when they learn the truth that if you live in the capital of the United States, you can't vote for a member of Congress that represents you. You don't have say over your local affairs because America is unique. We love to talk about democracy in other countries, but when it comes to providing it to the citizens of Washington, D.C., 
we fall short. D.C. residents are denied equal rights in the national capital, and Congress controls the affairs of the city, not the residents. I want to ask here. you about that. Um, one of the things that Senator Carper highlighted in his remarks is the notion that D.C. is sometimes used by congressmen um, who really want to advance their own agenda. Can you talk a, a little bit about what he meant by that? Sure. The 535 voting members of Congress have more to say about what happens in the District of Columbia than the, the 640,000 people who live here. Members of Congress, particularly those in the Republican Party on the right, will frequently use D.C. as a laboratory for their social policy experience. They will impose their own whims over our budget. If we pass a law that they disagree with, they'll impose their own will. That's wrong. That's not what the framers of our country, we believe, intended for the people who live in the capital city. Every American has the right to be represented in their own government. In fact, our nation was founded on the principle of taxation without representation being tyranny, and yet that's the political reality for Washingtonians right now. And currently this bill has 18 co-sponsors, which as I understand it is the most co-sponsors co ever on a, a Senate District of Columbia bill. It's also got some good support in the House for that version that's been well presented. Well over 100, well yes. Well over 100 uh, congressmen. Do you think this is achievable? Are you seeing the momentum that you'd like to see at this point? Look, it's been very difficult to get the Congress of the United States to do anything, even on important national issues like immigration reform. That being said, momentum is building for a just solution to the grievances of the people of the District of Columbia. Are we going to get it tomorrow? No. We know that the Republican-controlled House of Representatives is going to be an obstacle to this bill, and we don't even have a solid shot of having the Senate pass it, given the short calendar left in this legislative session. Mm -hmm. But yesterday's hearing was a milestone. It was historic. It was significant. Uh, and I think it represents a new momentum for our cause. I think you just touched on, on some of the criticism, not having enough time. Um, of course, we've seen a lot of senators critical, including Senator Coburn, who uh, appeared at the hearing yesterday. Let's take a look, quick listen to what he had to say. Here we are again debating this issue, even though it has no chance of success in this chamber and is dead on arrival in the House and will not and cannot possibly be even considered before we go sine die. This bill makes a state out of the neutral land that, land that houses the federal government. It's unprecedented. Little effort was made to hold a hearing that seriously debates this bill. So the senator seemed to think that this was all a waste of time, but is that a rationale for not exploring the issue at least? Well, the senator certainly didn't spend much of his time there. He left after only 10 minutes or so. So heard that. it would have been helpful if he had perhaps listened to the testimony. It might not have been such a poor use of his time. That being said, uh, we had eight witnesses representing both viewpoints, both for and against the bill. The constitutional issues were explored. The political implications were explored. And I think for the first time in a while, we focused on the moral implications. You know, Senator Carper talked about the golden rule, treating others as you would have, you, have them treat you. Uh, it's wrong for D.C. residents to be denied equal rights in their government. Most people around the world can't comprehend that the United States will do this to its own citizens, let alone the citizens of their own capital. No other country does this to their people. And it's about time we righted this 200-year-old wrong. All right, we'll have to see what happens. Paul Strauss, shadow senator representing the District of Columbia, perhaps one day New Columbia. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us and weighing in on that. Thank you, Andrea. A native Washington Frank Barr is an artist that is passionate about D.C. statehood. You will find Frank uh, employing his video and music talent in every opportunity he finds to promote D.C. statehood. And he's always proud to wear a D.C flag pin with any attire. Thank you, Frank, for being with us in this continued fight. Yeah. Woo! Frank! And thank you all so much. Uh, thank you to the Congressman of our city, uh, Franklin Garcia, uh, for giving me an opportunity to grow and grow within the statehood movement and to grow within, you know, using media and arts and entertainment to push for democracy for Washington, D.C., being the 51st state. And I encourage everybody to, you know, work with us to continue to use creative, artistic right. ways right. to push for democracy That's for right. Washington, D.C. That's right. Music has inspired the American spirit, motivated us to political change and the fight for freedom. 
in today's modern era, more modern forms that reflect the values of our community, like hip hop, rap, and other forms of creative expression continue to inspire Americans towards civic change and democratic action. The arts are an important part of our community. Not only do they help directly motivate and lift the spirit, but they enrich the soul. And that's why it's important that we continue to make arts part of the DC Statehood Movement and that we keep arts education in our school's curriculum because it's really as important as math or science or anything else. The arts are what a civilization is judged by. And I'm just so proud to have the support of people like yourself, Frank, and the music that you make merging with our political activities to form a more dynamic movement towards a more perfect union. Now it's time for Frankie to switch hats. It's the city at night. Let's go. Let's go. Uh. In DC at night, trying to find a decent bar. After we come from Adams Morgan from the pizza bar. DuPont circle on the roof, seeing things afar See me rising like a beaming star I'm Frankie Bars, got the keys to where the people are With some artists and eccentrics who seem bizarre Before I roll up with the congressman, we clean the car Had to grab my passport for the DR Dominican Republic, where this hat because I'm public Got the keys to where the puppets With some girls who act the pumpets Hustle by with trumpets When I come through it be trumpets Since I reach we bring the ruckus Got the keys to where the truck is War 5, that's Saratoga War 7, still Minnesota Mumble sauce, chicken with a soda Summer's here, glad the winter's over Frankie bars, no I wear this hat because I'm hot Got the keys to the top and the bottom lock Red gang serve a harvest into the past droughts Red gang, I was breaking bread with noble wheels I'll take you to the hill and I'll take you to the south Had a boy chasing like she was on my heels 18th, where I kept the work behind the couch Got the keys to the front and behind the house Whitney popping her wine sweet Keep it going till they want some more Drop the bars on this fire beat Won't stop till we can vote on the floor Yeah It's the Frankie Bar show But where this happens I discuss it What? Then I hit you with the rap when it's happy cause I crush it.